Okay, I want to talk about um, using VMware Player to install a virtual machine of Windows 7 Ultimate. Uh, this is uh, an exercise that you're going to be doing in uh, your Chapter 4 labs, and you're going to be doing that on Wednesday. We're going to give you all day Wednesday to do this, uh, both class periods, uh, to complete this lab. Uh, because it is going to take a while to get through this and then to record the results of your lab, which I will walk around and look at individually on each student um, and uh, to see if you've completed it successfully. Um, today what I'm going to do is demo for you exactly what you're going to be doing on your desktop on Wednesday. I've created a video here uh, using a Windows Media Encoder and a screen recovery uh, recorder rather program to do that. So um, I want to uh, show you this uh, particular video as a preparation for the labs on Wednesday for Chapter 4. So the first thing you'll need to do is look out on your desktop and you have an executable out there called VMware Player. If you double click on that executable it's going to open up to this window that you see right here. Uh, Welcome to VMware Player. Okay. Um, there is a link here called the Create New Virtual Machine that we're going to be using to create that Windows 7 Ultimate version uh, on the uh, as a guest OS running in your host OS, which is Windows 7 Enterprise. Um, when you open up the uh, when you click on the, rather the link to create a new virtual machine, you're going to get this window. Um, you want to leave the radio button set for installer disk image file, which is an ISO, because we're going to go out and uh, on your X drive, which is stu data, and there is a Windows 7.iso uh, file we're going to grab to create this virtual machine in VMware Player. Uh, I'm going to be simulating that at home here uh, with the video I'm creating uh, as a C drive as opposed to X, but yours will be an X drive. Um, so I'm going to click the Browse button here to grab that file. And so I'm going to double click on the C drive. And um, well, let me go back. I didn't grab. Double click on the C drive. Double click on the NOS 110 folder, the ISOs folder, the Windows 7 folder. And here is the file we're going to be grabbing, which is the Windows 7.iso. Now for you, it'll be X, uh, NOS 110, um, ISO's uh, Win7 and then this file. So when you see this file you want to click on it and you'll want to click open. Alright, the next thing you'll want to do is you'll want to um, click the next button, leave everything else uh, by default. You uh, will get this next window which is asking you to install a Windows product key. Well, for purposes of this lab we do not want to use a product key uh, to do that, we don't need one because it will install without the product key. What we do want to do though is change the version of Windows that we want to install from the home basic version uh, to the ultimate version. Uh, now this is the version of Windows 7 that does not require a Microsoft support agreement uh, that is used by the consumer, which is equivalent to enterprise with the, roughly the same uh, options and available features. All right, so you want to leave the personalized windows alone here. Don't do anything with that. And then we want to click the Next button. You're going to get this warning message that says uh, you did not enter a Windows product key. We know that. Uh, we did that purposely. And so would you like to continue? We're going to say yes here. All right. Now, in the virtual machine name, uh, you can leave it as Windows 7, uh, or you can change it to Ultimate. Uh, I'm going to change mine to Ultimate. You don't need to, but you can if you like. Location, you'll want to leave that alone. Let it uh, put the, uh, the, the VM in the location that it specifies. Let's click the Next button here. Then you're going to get a window uh, that's telling you what the maximum disk size is for this virtual machine. It's recommended. It's recommending 60 gigabytes here to me, and I'm going to leave it at 60. Uh, the radio button also uh, here that's selected is the split virtual disk into multiple files. You want to do that, and you want to leave that because it will reduce uh, performance uh, if you don't. And so let's go ahead and click uh, next button here. And then on this button, or in this window rather, it's going to show us uh, exactly what the installer uh, of VMware Player is going to do in installing that virtual machine for Windows 7 Ultimate. Uh, and it tells you all of the uh, 
the, the requirements here that, uh, that it's going to uh, force upon that virtual machine. Notice uh, memory here is one gigabyte. We left that as default. So everything that it's going to do is displayed for you here. So let's go ahead and uh, leave this checkbox checked for power on this virtual machine after creation. And let's just click the next, or finish button rather. And now it's going out and actually creating the disk uh, out on our desktop in our host uh, operating system, which is Windows 7 Enterprise. This is going to take a few minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the video while it completes that and come back at the end of the process. Okay, it's been roughly two minutes now, and it's just about to uh, complete the uh, creating disk process here. And so when that completes, uh, the VMWare uh, player will restart the guest operating system, and uh, we'll show you how that looks. Okay, so the VMware player is restarting the uh, the host operating system. I mean, the guest operating system. It's loading uh, Windows files now. And you're going to get this starting Windows. It's going to start up. And uh, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to um, start expanding files and installing Windows files and doing some other things. There will be a screen that will come up that will show you exactly what's happening here. Uh, we are not required to uh, do anything at this point. So I'm just going to wait and let this uh, come up and uh, show you what it's going to look like. If I need to stop the video at any point because of a lengthy time between processes, I'll go ahead and do that and restart it as needed. Okay, the installer is coming up, and we um, should get that window that I referred to earlier here in a moment. Okay, and setup is beginning here. We are about uh, 10 to 11 minutes uh, into this process right now. All right, here's the installing Windows window. Uh, it's copying Windows files, and uh, it will do that and complete that. Put a check mark next to it, and then it'll jump down to the next step in the process with expanding Windows files and complete this entire list until it completes the total installation. All right, so it has completed the first step and now is in the process of expanding those Windows files. Now, this particular part of the process is going to take several minutes, so I will be stopping the video and coming back uh, when we get further on down the list. Okay, uh, it's been about 12 minutes now, and we're up at the 97% expanding Windows files uh, part of the process here. So uh, you can see how long this takes. It's going to be about oh, roughly 30, 40 minutes for the total process. Um, so we're at 99%. Uh, it gets to 100. It should get a check mark there in the expanding Windows files, and then it should jump down to installing uh, features and installing updates. So I'm going to let that process run here. Uh, okay, it's installing features is finished. It's now installing updates. And uh, when it completes that, uh, it's actually going out and doing some updates 
for the operating system uh, to be here uh, when we get it completed. And then it'll jump down to that last uh, step, which is the completing installation uh, portion. Um, and you can see the bar along the bottom here as it's progressing now. Uh, Windows needs to restart to continue. It'll do that a couple of times. Um, I'm going to just let it run and restart on its own. You can click the Restart Now button and uh, speed up the process if you like. So VMware Player is going to be uh, restarting this environment as if it were restarting the operating system. That's the neat thing about VMs is you can um, start and stop the operating system or the process here as you see uh, and it doesn't impact your host OS at all. So you're not you know, restarting your host OS, you're restarting only the guest. All right, when this phase uh, completes, it'll go back to that window and complete the uh, installation of Windows. I'll probably be stopping the video again um, at that point to, um, to let it complete that process or get near the end of it because it does take, again, several minutes to complete. Your setup is updating um, registry settings. And now it's coming back up to setup is going to then continue starting services and doing other setup features and operations. All right, so now we are still doing the completing installation you can see down here uh, where the bar is and like I said it's going to take several minutes for this to complete so I'm going to go ahead and once again um, stop the video and come back at near completion okay I'm back uh, it's been about uh, 10 to 15 minutes uh, setup has now completed uh, Windows installation and it's now continuing after restarting the computer so it's going to be restarting the computer at this point um, like I said it, this is a lengthy process um, so um, you just have to be patient and bear with it alright so uh, we're starting up Windows again and uh, we're going to be coming up uh, the next time it comes up it's going to be doing some other things um, in addition to installing the VMware tools um, which are add-ons to the VM, VM itself, the virtual machine. You have to make sure that if that doesn't happen, that you go back and uh, force that process because you want the virtual machine tools, uh, the VMware tools, to install. All right, so let's uh, watch this as this process continues on. doing a lot of things in the background here that uh, you can't really see. Um, uh, a lot of things that it's doing to develop the virtual machine of uh, Windows 7 Ultimate. Alright, so it's coming up and uh, now setup is uh, preparing this, this computer for the first use. Um, so basically what it's doing is preparing the, the uh, guest OS, uh, which is Windows 7 Ultimate, for its first use as a virtual machine. Uh, it's looking at video performance. It's actually touching the video hardware controls for uh, the host OS, the machine that your host OS is running on, looking at that because it's using the video um, from your host machine in this process. 
and if it detects any errors, uh, we'll we'll see that. Hopefully, we won't get that. And so we are about 15 minutes, 15 seconds into this video, uh, and a total time span of about 30 plus minutes, 35 minutes perhaps, uh, for this whole process. All right, so now we're done with that, and we're getting ready to come up uh, into Windows 7 Ultimate. We got the welcome screen coming up for us. It's preparing our desktop, and since we didn't put any user information in here, uh, username or password, it's just going to automatically boot into Windows for us. Uh, but I, it's still going to have to install the VMware add-ons. And that's done by VMware Player, that's not done by uh, Windows 7 during its install process. So if you were installing this on a, um, you can ignore that error, an actual po uh, computer, reference computer, uh, you wouldn't get the VMware tools, obviously, because you're not installing a, a virtual machine. But we are. All right, so it's still preparing the desktop. And this takes a few minutes to complete, and so we have to be patient with it. If I have to stop the video again, I will. And as you can see, we uh, we do have Windows 7 Ultimate here. So it, it did pick up the right version uh, in the, uh, the VMware wizard interface. All right, so we're coming up into uh, Windows 7 now. And that's preparing to install the um, VMware tools. And Windows installer is installing right now, so it's pre preparing the way for the VMware tools. And I'm going to go ahead and select this public network here because we want to select the public network as the one we want to get on um, whenever Windows finally uh, stabilizes for us. All right, so here's the VMware tool set up, and it automatically launched for us. That's a good thing. Um, so it's going to be doing its thing here, installing those VMware tools or VMware uh, virtual machine add-ons. And we want to let them all install. We don't want to uh, cancel the process or uh, modify the process in any way. First thing it's doing is it's validating the installation to make sure that it's a good installation before it actually implements it, and that's a good thing. It's part of its transaction processing. Uh, now it's copying new files and writing those files, creating and installing uh, drivers, etc. Um, so this process, again, is going to take a few minutes to complete. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes, and um, VMware tools are still installing. Uh, it's installing a video driver now, um, and it's about to wrap that up. So uh, it's coming to the end of it. It's removing any backup files here in this process uh, that are not needed to remain on the uh, in the VM itself. And uh, and then once we come out of this, um, it should. Connect us to the public network uh, since we set that in the set network location field uh, window uh, previously to the installation of the VMware tools. And we'll check it whenever it uh, comes up.
All right, so it's wrapping up that process. I'll select network, public network again just to make sure it takes it. And it should come out of this. And now it's logging off. It's going to shut down the, uh, the virtual machine and then restart it to come up to um, the initial state for the first time use by the user. Alright, so it's uh, starting Windows, and as I said, Windows likes to hide a lot of things it's doing in the background, um, unlike other operating systems like Linux. Uh, Windows uh, does a lot of things in the background, but only presents uh, this nice little picture of a, um, you know, the Windows logo here to the user to let the user know something's happening. For the most part, the typical user doesn't really need to know what's happening in the background. They just need to know, can I get in and start using my Windows operating system? That's all that Microsoft really cares about, and for most cases, the user. Okay, so now it's going to come up um, and restart uh, Windows again, and um, so we're here at Windows 7 Ultimate, asking us to wait. Now we've got the welcome screen again. And uh, when it comes up to a point, uh, I'm going to expand this to full screen and change the background. Okay, so Windows is up now, and um, we are um, need to actually work with this so that we can uh, get the full screen to come up but we can see the start menu um, so let me do some things here uh, that should give us the full screen but I'm not getting the um, start menu that I that I'm looking here we go um, yeah, it's still it's not working for me um, trying to get this start menu to come up. I'm going to leave it the way it is. Um, I'm trying to get it to where it comes down here in the start menu. This is the host OS start menu. I don't want to click on that one. This is the one I want. Um, so I want to click on the start menu and get in here. This is the uh, start menu itself and I'm going to get into uh, computer and um, you can see we've got uh, in this particular case we used um, 50 well, 53.4 gigabytes are free of the 59.9 that we had available. Um, I wanted to check, um, let me do right click on uh, computer properties, and I wanted to look and see, you know, this is the 32-bit operating system version for Windows 7 Ultimate here, Service Pack 1. Um, and we can change the computer name if you wanted to, full name, etc. We're not going to do that right now. Uh, what I wanted to do is, let me get into control panel, and um, I want to come down to, let's change it off of category to large icons, and let's come down to network and sharing center. I want to make sure we're on the public network, and we are. And so we do have a connection to the network, or to the inter uh, internet rather, um, as well. So I should be able to fire up uh, Internet Explorer and uh, get onto the web. Looks like it's going to come up for us. And it's going to our home page. And by default, the home page in Internet Explorer is msn.com. So we are on the web uh, looking at Internet Explorer browser uh, version 8 here. So let me just ask me later here and then get rid of that. Um, so this has been a demonstration 
of the uh, Windows 7 Ultimate install as a VM and guest operating system on your Windows 7 Enterprise host operating system on your desktop using VMware Player.